the Republicans just agreed, while they're in the majority in the House, to two years debt ceiling increase totaling $4 trillion. That is a big deal. Now, what is to hold the Democrats' feet to the fire if they win the House and the presidency next time around? Or forget about the presidency. They just win the House. Well, we agreed, you know, to a 10-year extent. Go screw yourselves. That's what they're going to say. But let's move to Dusty Johnson. Did we decide we know where he's from? Oh, yeah, South Dakota. Uh, we had a guess here. I guess so we, we were guessing. You name somebody Dusty, or that's their nickname. I guess Texas or Louisiana. I was off by about 1,500 miles. South Dakota. Okay, Dusty, what do you have to say? Go. President Biden and Speaker McCarthy last night announced that they have struck an agreement in principle. Oh, that's very good. You know, I used to think I had that voice, to some extent I do, but Jake's got it over me. There's no question about it. Go ahead. The nation's borrowing cap and avert a looming fiscal catastrophe. Oh, uh, you get looming fiscal catastrophe. The media are just so pathetic. Looming fiscal catastrophe. You know, we don't have a free press in this country. And that's part of the problem. They want you to think what they think. They want you to think what they want you to think. They don't want you to think for yourselves. And so they use, I took one speech course way, way long ago in college. It was a very interesting course. I don't remember a ton of it, but I remember a little of it. And one of the things I do remember is language is put into, not completely, but essentially two categories. The terms and the phrases, and he knows this, devil terms, angel terms, catastrophe, that's a devil term. Avoid, you know, a looming catastrophe, avoid, that's an angel word. So we want to avoid Republicans, it's that simple, go ahead. With the U.S. set to run out of money to pay its bills as early as Monday, June 5th, but... No, they won't. Do you have to be so stupid to be an anchor on CNN and MSNBC? You're going to run out of anything. Whew. Go ahead. A big question remains. Can they now get this deal passed in time? I don't know. Let's find out from Dusty Johnson. President Biden acknowledged last night that the agreement is, quote, a compromise, which means not everyone gets what they want. Wait a minute. What's a compromise mean again? Everyone doesn't get what they want. The CNN audience must have a very, very low IQ. Go ahead. And already we know about deep concerns from progressives and from conservatives. McCarthy, on a call with Republicans last night, reportedly said the Democrats did not get a single thing they wanted in the deal. And McCarthy emphasized what the GOP got in exchange for raising the debt limit capping non-defense domestic spending, canceling billions in IRS funding, and temporarily imposing work requirements on childless, able-bodied adults younger than 55 who receive food stamps. President Biden says the agreement protects democratic priorities and legislative accomplishments. One could also note that the deal lifts the nation's debt limit for two years, avoiding a messy fight just ahead of the 2024 election. Can't have these messy fights over the future of the country, no. We need to be on a glide path to massive spending, massive government, anti-American propaganda in our classroom. We've got a whole glide path, so we don't want any messy fights. No, 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 not in a democracy. We want everything to go as we insist. There's this messy fight stuff. Jeez, I'm glad these guys weren't around during the Revolutionary War. What? Don't want to be a messy fight here? Can't we get along? What's with these revolutionaries? They're grotesque. I mean, all they have to do is pay some taxes. All they have to do is show some fealty to the crown. I mean, come on here with these white nationalists, white supremacist colonists. Go ahead. And in general, the cuts are not as deep as many House Republicans wanted and many House Democrats feared. Joining us now, a Republican leader who helped negotiate this deal, Congressman Dusty Johnson of South... Dusty Johnson, everybody! Actually, no offense, he looks like a Dusty Johnson. Go ahead. But a Congressman, thanks so much for joining us. So what, what can you tell us about the specifics of what's in this agreement, and, and why do you think it's a good deal for House Republicans to vote for? 
Yeah, yeah, I think you did a good job of providing the outlines as far as the spending. I mean, this is going to cut non-defense and non-VA spending back to 2022 levels. That is a big get for Republicans. That's what we had in Limit, Save, Grow. And it's going to save $1.5 trillion over the course of the next 10 years. It also, for six years, establishes... Hold on a sec. Whenever you hear politicians of any color talk about it's going to save XYZ for 10 years, don't believe a word of it. He has no power for 10 years. Last time I checked, the House is, is up for election every two years. So it's not going to save us every 10 years. They never save us over 10 years, period. Anyway, go ahead. At 1% so we can slow the growth of spending. But, Jake, two things I want to hit that your graphic did not have. First off, late last night, a new provision was agreed to by the White House uh, and the Speaker, whereby we're going to unlock uh, American energy. We are going to provide shot clocks. Uh, for NEPA review, environmental review of 12 months and 24 months. That is going to help whether you like renewable energy or traditional energy. This is going to help unlock that energy. Speed up the process. By Speed which up people... the process. Yeah, okay. You know, Germany and France, the same kind of project they would get done in two years. It takes us seven years, Jake. So we do need reform here. And obviously Democrats like uh, Buttigieg and Manchin have talked about doing this. Well, now we're going to get it done. And then finally, uh, just a big thing, it's, it's administrative pay-go. When you have the administration step forward and propose some vast new regulation that's going to cost hundreds of billions of dollars, now they have to go find the money within the existing bureaucracy. It is a huge strike against a growing regulatory state. Yeah, that's one of the things that members of Congress complain about the most, not just with Democratic administrations, but Republicans passing a law and not allocating money uh, to make sure the law goes through. We're hearing a lot of grumbling from conservatives in your caucus. Uh, Congressman Ken Buck called this uh, deal a debt ceiling surrender. Congressman Ralph Norman said it was insanity. Congressman Bob Good uh, tweeted that no one claiming to be a conservative could justify a yes vote. Their basic criticism uh, is that McCarthy gave up too much and could have, uh, could have uh, gotten more. What, what, how do you say, what do you say to that? I'm the head of a group of 75 pragmatic conservatives called the Main Street Caucus. And so when we say conservatives are against it, I want to make it clear. I don't know. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Rhinos, I think. Isn't that what they're... We're the Main Street Caucus. Okay, so the Marxists are destroying our country. Everything's out of control. But we're the mainstream Caucus. Come on, Dusty, let's hear some more. Of the mainstream caucus House conservatives. Freedom caucus conservatives. Uh, uh, well, and say. even some of them. I listen, there will be Freedom Caucus people who vote for this package. So when you're saying that conservatives have concerns, it is really uh, the most colorful conservatives. Some of those guys you mentioned didn't vote for the thing when it was uh, kind of a Republican wish list limit, save, grow. Those votes were never really in play. We get this. So hold on, hold on. Not all of them. Some of them did vote for it, like Chip Roy and so forth. So that's not fair. But go ahead. But uh, overwhelmingly, Republicans in this conference are going to support the deal. How could they not? It is a fantastic deal. How many votes do you think you're going to get? How many votes can you afford to lose? I, I, we're starting the whipping process now. Okay. I have talked to... Sounds painful. You know, they do this whipping in Congress all the time. Uh, in fact, some of them take it so far that they've had to enter into secret agreements to pay off the people they've been whipping. Go ahead. Between two and three dozen Republican members, I have not heard, had a single one of them tell me I can't support that. Well, I just, I just gave you the names of three you can call, maybe. Well, the, uh, Buck, Norman, and Good, who, who, who yeah, might have some thoughts. I'm not sure having Dusty Johnson call Bob Good is the perfect way to get uh -huh. his vote. But I mean, let's be honest, Bob Good will not vote for this thing. And it mm. doesn't matter if Mother Teresa came back from the dead and called him. He's not voting for it. He was never going to. We're go this is going to pass. So 70 members of the Main Street Caucus that you mentioned, are they all going to vote for it, you think? I would be surprised. I mean, I haven't talked to every single one of them, but everybody I'm talking to, Jake, understands that when you're reducing spending, that when you're uh, peeling back the regulatory state, uh, when you are unlocking American energy, and when you're getting people back to work, this is a big deal. What concessions did McCarthy make to Biden and Democrats to get it across the finish line? That is kind of the amazing part to me. There were no wins for Democrats. If you look at the... At the All right, hold on. Hold on. Mainstream caucus. Hold on a second. You're lifting the debt ceiling over the next two years by $4 trillion. That sounds like a big damn win to me. That's what they wanted. That's what they wanted. They don't care about out years. In other words... Anything that goes beyond 20 months, 
if they take the House, all of this is off the table. Do you understand what I'm saying? All of it's off the table. So I think one of the concerns conservatives have is that the Republicans just agreed, while they're in the majority in the House, to two years debt ceiling increase totaling $4 trillion. That is a big deal. Now, what is to hold the Democrats' feet to the fire if they win the House and the presidency next time around? Or forget about the presidency. They just win the House. Well, we agreed, you know, to a 10-year extent. Go screw yourselves. That's what they're going to say. Want to see more Mark Levin? Go to levintv.com and subscribe now.